In this video, I want to talk about the first part of the sensitivity report related to variable cells, and specifically this part that shows you the objective coefficients and the allowable increases and decreases for each objective coefficient. What is the, uh, the, the, um, the usefulness of this? Well, this range, allowable increase to allowable decrease, it shows you by how much can this objective coefficient be increased at most or decreased at most without altering the optimal solution, right? So in other words, if I were to change this objective coefficient 350, if you recall, right, this was the pr profit per unit of aqua spa, right, which is shown here and which it, it gets into the sum product, right? If I were to increase this objective coefficient by no more than 100, this solution would still be optimal. This is the meaning. Or if I were to decrease it by at most 50, then this would still remain optimal, right? And this analysis works only if you change one coefficient at a time. So if I were to keep this 350, but then I would change this second coefficient, which was $300 for every Hydrolux, then uh, if I were to increase it by at most 50 or decrease it by at most 66 point a fraction, right, then this would still remain the optimal solution, right? So sensitivity analysis uh, helps us assess um, uh, kind of stability of the solution. Uh, why is it even called sensitivity analysis? Imagine that allowable increase here was 3 and 1.5. Then I would say, well, this uh, solution is very sensitive to this objective coefficient because if we only change it by more than 3 and increase by more than 3 or decrease by more than 1.5 would actually change this optimal solution. When it is 150, this is a more stable solution. We have a wider range of values for each objective coefficient that uh, in which this, this solution is stable. So it tells us something about stability. Um, and this is, of course, useful because these, these objective coefficients that we assumed, well, they were calculated based on some data like uh, selling prices, right? that we're assuming, like some costs that we will incur, right? So they were profit contributions subject to certain assumptions, but what if my assumptions were incorrect? What if these contributions are actually lower or higher? Well, at least I have some information how stable this solution is, even if these numbers uh, are, not, uh, are not exactly as they are, right? So as, as they were assumed. So... Um, Right? So it tells me something about the robustness of this solution. Um, to make sure we understand the, you understand the, um, the meaning of allowable increase and decrease, I have a few questions that I want to go over with. Um, uh, so suppose uh, the profit for Hydrolux actually is not 300, it is 310, right? So the second... Uh, um, decision variable, the profit was assumed to be 300, as you can see here in the model, right? And now I'm saying, what if it is 310? What will happen if I were to resolve the problem, uh, right, in Excel, with uh, changing the, the value from 300 to 310, uh, changing the profit of uh, profit contribution for each Hydrolux? Well, I don't need to resolve it because I have the sensitivity report and I know what will happen. I actually know the solution will not uh, change, right? Because 300 is the profit coefficient, right? Uh, profit 300 is an objective function coefficient, um, right? With an allowable. Now I'm increasing, so I need to see allowable increase here. Uh, allowable increase of 50. All right, so if it is allowable increase 50, now I'm increasing by 10, that is less, right, than allowable increase that is 50, right? So I am within the allowable increase. Actually, I could consider this to be within up to less or equal 50, right? So an increase of at most 50 uh, satisfies this condition, right? So what do I know from this? I said, right, as long as the one objective coefficient 
increases or decreases within the limits here, the solution is not altered. So I can say the old optimal solution remains optimal, right? It does not change, right? And, um, and now, what else can I say? Well, I can say something more. Well, given that, right, 122 aqua spas and 78 hydroluxes is still an optimal solution, we can calculate the new optimal profit, right? Because right, what happens is, now I change this coefficient, 300 is no longer 300, it's 310. So what I'm claiming here is the solution doesn't change. We still produce 122.78, um, right, aqua spas and hydroluxes. This is still the optimal solution. However, that given that I just gained $10 on each uh, hydrolux, I should, right, I can calculate a new optimal profit, right? Um, it will be, right, now, it will be not 350 times uh, 122 plus 300, one, right? Times 78, it will be 310, right? So I can recalculate this, and I can find out that it actually is 66,880, right? So in uh, this is more than what we had before, 66,100. Right, and another way to approach this would be uh, that I can actually say, well, profit increased by this increase of ten that I have here, multiplied by the original value of the uh, the, the decision variable seventy eight. Right, so it increased by seven hundred eighty. Right, so this is something I can come up with based on sensitivity uh, analysis that you see here, um, the sensitivity report. And if you want to convince yourself that it actually works, well, we can go to the model and we can do what we can always do, right? We can change this value 300 to 310, right? Obviously, we shouldn't now accept this as the optimal solution. We just change the parameters. So to be certain this is still optimal, we should go to the solver and say, optimize again for the new 310 profit for Hydrolux. So if I click now solve, solver again finds an optimal solution and notice it still claims this is the same, the same optimal solution, right? So it didn't change it. And then we see the 66,880, the increase of 780 here in the optimal profit, right? So I will go back to 300 just not to lose the original problem. What if the change was not to 310, but it would be, for example, to 370? All right, so let's consider this second question. What if uh, the profit of for hydroluxes increases from 300 to 370, so it increases by 70? Well, this is still, uh, which is still changing the profit coefficient, right? The objective coefficient with an allowable increase of 50, but this time an increase of 70 is not less than allowable increase of 50, so the old optimal solution might no longer be optimal, right? And so we say like solution is no longer stable uh, when we when we change the, the objective coefficient so much. And what does this mean? Well, it means that um, that uh, we can no longer determine what the, uh, right, if we need to resolve the problem to find out what's the optimal solution. Now, we shouldn't expect 122.78 to be optimal. In some rare cases in optimization, it might still remain optimal, but there is basically no guarantee, right? And because of this also, we cannot just say that now the, uh, uh, the optimal profit will increase by 70 times the optimal value 78, right? Because this solution, this is no longer optimal solution, no guarantees about its optimality, so this is not going to be either the optimal profit. And again, if you want to convince yourself and you go to Excel and, uh, and we do the same thing, right, as we did before, instead of 300, we put now 370, right? So it looks like the optimal profit, the, sorry, the profit from this solution is 71,000 560. However, if we click solve and resolve the problem, look what happens now. 
right? Uh, and, uh, and you will see the solution has been changed. Now the solution is, seven, uh, is, is 80 aquas plus and 120 hydroluxes, and the optimal profit is 72,400, not 71,560 from the old optimal solution. So the old optimal solution stopped being optimal. Its profit is this. But if we resolve, we find out that the optimal solution is actually different, right? So to summarize, the uh, allowable increase here tells us for, uh, in this case for hydroluxes, tells us in what range, if we change just one coefficient, what range the optimal solution will remain the same as it was. And if you go outside of this allowable increase, it, it, we know that the optimal solution might change, might no longer, the old optimal solution might no longer be optimal. And uh, therefore, we need to resolve the problem to find out what the new optimal solution is. What is the graphical interpretation of uh, the allowable increase and decrease of objective coefficients? So I have here a, a little um, a tool that shows me the feasible region in the problem. It shows the three binding constraints, the, sorry, the three constraints, right, that I can uh, highlight or unhighlight, right? And it shows me also this dotted line, this tiny uh, dotted line is the profit level curve, right? So this was the this is the original problem where we have the solution 100 to 20 to 78. This is this point, and this shows us the profit line that crosses this point. Right? This is the line on which all solutions are achieving 66,100 dollars of profit. And you know, if you uh, if you recall the graphical uh, interpretation, if we were to move up to the right, there would be other parallel lines with higher values of profit, but unfortunately this area does not include any feasible solutions, right? And here below there are lines with lower profit, but uh, we, we, there is plenty of feasible solutions that give us lower profits, but we're not interested in them because we want to maximize profit. That's why this is the optimal solution. This is the last solution, right, on the largest profit line that is still feasible. Right. So what happens when I remember, remember we were increasing the hydrolux profit coefficient. So if I changed it from 300 to 310, observe what happens with the slope of this line. Right. When I change it to plus one, plus five, plus ten. Right. And you see the slope slightly changes. Right. Um, the solution still remains optimal. This is still the highest profit line if I just changed it by 10. But if I continue changing it, the slope keeps changing until at 350, which is the allowable increase. Remember, increase by 50, this is still an optimal solution, but there are multiple optimal solutions, right? So there is more optimal solutions at this point because it happens that all points on this segment achieve the maximum profit. And if I change it, remember, increase it by 70, right? So it increases it to 370. Notice this is this old solution is no longer optimal. There is a better solution here, right? So the, the level curve, maybe I'll increase it a little bit more, is now indicating, let's say if I go to all the way to 400, it's now indicating this is the optimal solution and the, 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 the profit here achieved is 76,000 in this case. And then the, the solution that was previously optimal somewhere here, an intersection of uh, right, this corner point here, uh, is no longer optimal because it, it is now on a lower uh, level curve, on a lower profit line. So this is the graphical interpretation of the uh, allowable increase and decrease of objective coefficients. And of course, you know, I could uh, apply this uh, analysis. I did apply it for allowable increase of the second objective coefficient, but we could have actually equally well decreased and tried to decrease it. And if we decrease it by at most 66 0.67, we would still have the same optimal solution. If we decrease it by more than this, we would uh, this would stop being the optimal solution. And the same thing, the same analysis could be applied for the first objective coefficient, increasing it by at most 100 or decreasing by at most 50 would not change the optimal uh, solution.